Hello, and welcome to AIC Vision. AIC Vision is a weekly news program produced by the Alternative Information Center, a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization in Beit Savor in Jerusalem. I'm Katherine Anderson. This week, a film on Susia, the latest on settler attacks, colonial strategies, and the ongoing harassment of residents. Then, Nassar Ibrahim, with a special report on the Rachel Corey verdict and international solidarity. But first, the top news. It's been a challenging week for activists in and around Palestine. On Tuesday, a Haifa court ruled that U.S. activist Rachel Corey's death was an accident, that the Israeli army is not responsible for her death. The judge stated that Corey could have saved herself, quote, as any reasonable person would have done. The Corey family had claimed a symbolic $1 in damages and legal expenses. Lawyers for the Corey family plan to appeal, but for now, many feel the ruling is yet another example of Israeli military impunity. Mrs. Corey said in a statement, quote, this is a sad day for human rights and a sad day for humanity. She also added, at least we have access to a court system, a right which most Palestinians are denied. Rachel was killed by a bulldozer in 2003. She was acting as a human shield in an effort to stop the Israeli army from demolishing Palestinian homes in Gaza. On Sunday, a group of a nearly 100 internationals from the organization Welcome to Palestine attempted unsuccessfully to visit the West Bank for a third time in the last year. The group attempted to bring school supplies across from Jordan. Israel's defense ministry denied entry to the group without further questioning, denouncing the protesters as provocateurs and known troublemakers. Welcome to Palestine activists would like to see Israel grant freedom of movement to the Palestinians and their visitors. The activists are currently meeting Palestinians in Jordanian refugee camps. Israeli military veterans involved in the organization Breaking the Silence released a report Saturday describing the culture of violence and abuse towards Palestinian children encouraged in the IDF. The report recounts more than 850 accounts of beatings and shares information indicting the IDF for encouraging soldiers to, quote, grind the population down. Accounts document numerous cases of children under the age of 16 being beaten, taken into custody, blindfolded, and deprived of food and water. Israel conducted a wave of demolitions in the South Hebron Hills on Tuesday morning. In the village of Zanuta, Israel demolished two house tents, two caves, six stables, and four wells that were full of water. Three structures were demolished in the village of Susia, including two house tents donated by the United Nations. More details on Susia the daily struggle its residents face with neighboring settlers and the ongoing pressure to leave. Brought to you now in a film by Johanna Montanari and Daniel Viand. The, um, the settlement of Susia was uh, founded in 82. Uh, on valuable, uh, fertile Palestinian land. Uh, and every day it grows bigger and bigger on Palestinian lands. My name is Muhammad Jabr Nawaja. I am one of the residents of Susi here, and I am the headmaster of the school here. There is a law, Ottoman law here they used. After three years, our the lands that prevented us from entering it, our lands, we have documents, we have tabu, and allowed, allowed the settlers to use our land. Here we are suffering from racism. The Israelis, the civil administration, the Israeli government here, uh, use racism, apartheid policy against the Arabs. You can see here the difference between settlers who came from all over the world and have the right here to take our land, to build modern houses with electricity, with telephones, with streets, with water. But here we are the owner of the land. We are not allowed even to, to build a tent here. Tent here, had these tents have a demolition order. 
they want to to uh, to dismiss to expel all the Arabs from area C here to Yatta or to cities in order to give this these lands to the settlers to build and to cultivate them. <laughs> We're at Hajj Saras in the area of Susia. This is the shelter just uh, on uh, the Hajj's property. The, it was destroyed in the year, year 2001. They destroyed four structures. This was one of them where they put the stones and the garbage on top of it. And then there were both uh, houses and other things as well that they destroyed in 2001 from right this part of Susia. My name is Ezra, I'm from Paris, Jerusalem. We are here in the exit or entry to Shabal Boto. As you see, there is a lot of olive trees, but uh, there is daily problem here. One of the one of the one of the problem is the settlers damaging the trees. I mean, it's an old story in many places, and so far there is no any 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 results from the investigation of the army or the the the, the police. And this is one of the way how the settlers fighting and try to throw out the Palestinian is just to make that damaging the trees or the other things for the water growing. And of course the police came and army came and civil dispensing came and they declared that they are taking it very seriously. But we, you judge things by the results and here there is no results. And what's said about this, it's, it's now the season of the olive zone and they just found time to, to damage it. Here, they wrote, the settlers wrote racism sentences to the Arabs without arresting or without investigating anyone. Death to the Arabs. Tag Mahir, we have to pay the expense, the expense, the expenses here of taking the land from, from the, the Jews. Another way of taking our land after our critical place here, security. They closed here all of the, our lands, even the, our land here uh, are cultivated with olive trees. Closed it because of security. Here Palestinians having tanks, having jumbo jets, having artillery weapons here. But they, we are threatening the security of the settl settlers there. The soldiers, civil administration, encourage them, support them to take our land. When the settlers, settler came with their sheep, uh, settlers came with their sheep, the soldiers there in the tower didn't arrest them. They came with them to protect them here. So he hit the Arabs with, uh, and the soldiers are looking, they didn't arrest them or stop them. Yeah, but the people are staying here. People are not uh, running away, not uh, going away. And now a special report on international solidarity through the lens of Rachel Corey. Here is Palestinian analyst and writer, Nassar Ibrahim. Uh, Rashid Khoury is a symbol now in the eyes of the Palestinian people everywhere as a, uh, an American activist, international, who came to Palestine in order to be in solidarity with the Palestinian uh, people. Uh, actually, as a Palestinian, we know the Israeli system, uh, the court system, the legal system, uh, we test that and we examine that since a long uh, times and uh, years regarding the Palestinian prisoners and, uh, and we know that it's not uh, neutral. Uh, what's going on regarding this issue today is uh, we'll send a lot of messages or different messages, uh, messages for the Israeli uh, society that uh, their system, their government will do what they can in order to prevent and to stop all the solidarity movement with the Palestinian people. The second uh, message is for the internationals who are coming uh, daily to, to, to Palestine in order to do something for the Palestinian people, to tell them 
we are not guarantee uh, your lives uh, meanwhile you are uh, standing beside the Palestinian uh, people uh, uh, but in the same time uh, I can say that uh, this uh, event and the killing of Rashid Kohli is reflect in depth the position or the status of the Israeli system who is trying to stop the solidarity movement and to minimize it uh, especially in light uh, the development of this solidarity movement in the last uh, years. As a Palestinian we see in this solidarity movement a crucial factor in the conflict. Why? Because the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is from the first moment is a global conflict. And the European societies they are uh, in the heart of this conflict and the establishment of the Israeli state is uh, started and achieved by the help of the government in, in Europe. Uh, for that, uh, when we are see these activists who are coming to, 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 to struggle with us in all levels, social struggle, political struggle, cultural struggle, uh, regards development, uh, we are not see it only as a ethical and moral uh, action. It's more than that. It's, uh, it's uh, for us. It's a political action, uh, especially in light the policies of the governments of the European, who are packing the Israeli uh, action and Israeli policies. And after all these decades of occupation, they didn't succeed to end this occupation. And not only that, they are promoting it. For that, uh, we uh, see that the solidarity movement, is its role is to, to, to stop these policies or to, 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 to face uh, the, the, their government policy. And uh, uh, for that, it's very important for us as a Palestinian people. This movement is part from our strategy. It's the other dimension of the Palestinian popular resistance in some way. Uh, for that, uh, we are asking and we are calling all the activists in all over the world to keep hope in their hearts and their minds and to raise their awareness and their uh, activism uh, in order to put more pressure on the, the, the Israeli occupation and to push him to pay the price of the occupation in order to end it and not to, to, to stop only in the, in the line of words and uh, ethical uh, dimension. Uh, our struggle together is just a struggle. And meanwhile they are uh, struggling to help us, in the same time they are struggling to help themselves. They are protecting their values, their understanding regards the basic needs of the human being, freedom, democracy, economic needs, uh, social needs, cultural needs. And uh, the Palestinian struggle is in the top of the human being struggling all over uh, the world. In this dimension, we hope from the solidarity movement to continue their role, their struggle. Uh, this is very, very essential for the Palestinian uh, people. This was AIC Vision. I'm Catherine Anderson, broadcasting from Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us.